All right, guys, so in this video, I'm gonna show you about 101 Ableton 10 tips. Most of these are gonna translate just fine to Ableton 9, and even uh, most of them to Ableton 8. Uh, but I wanted to make an updated video just to show some of the new features as well, and just up update everything. So to get started, one difference in Ableton 10 from the other versions is I like to start by turning off this keyboard icon for just a moment because the A key turns on the automation and I kind of like the automation to stay on, okay? And then I can turn back on this keyboard and that way the QWERTY keys can also become a, a keyboard as well. So first thing I'm gonna do here is show you uh, just basic cut, copy, and paste. So first thing that we wanna do is just highlight a section that we want to copy. So an important part of cut, copy, and paste in Ableton 10 is that, let's go ahead and just real quickly make an automation here, all right? So when I highlight the section just kind of from the bottom, you'll see that it's underneath this, uh, this top area, okay? And when you do that, you can copy and paste the automation, but it doesn't copy the actual clip. If I hit Command Z, it'll undo. And by the way, if you're using a PC, all the things that I'm gonna show you, uh, just trade Command with Control, and you'll be able to get the same results, all right? Mac seems to use Command for all their keystrokes, and PCs use Control. So we'll back up here real quick. And then if we go all the way up to the top and across, now we can copy and paste our clip, okay? And we can duplicate just uh, with Command D. So as you can see, I'm duplicating. Go ahead and undo that. If I wanna cut something, it's really easy. You just highlight. And once again, you wanna to get to the top of the clip and command X. And as you can see, it'll remove that. So those are your basic cut, copy, duplicate. Now, not only can you duplicate a clip, but you could duplicate almost anything. So uh, for example, I could come over here to this track if I want, and I can just hit D, command D. And there we go, we've duplicated the track just that easy. On a track, we can duplicate, copy, cut, paste um, any of the effects. We can't do that with the instrument because you could either only have one instrument or one instrument in a group, and I'll explain that later. But you could simply click on and duplicate an effect just the same. So next, uh, we'll get into Command A, and Command A is just for all. So when you're selecting clips and hit Command A, as you can see, it will highlight all the clips. If you hit Command A within a MIDI clip, you could just click on one and then hit Command A, and it'll highlight all the different notes. Next, we have the Tab key, and the Tab key is gonna switch between this window, the Arrangement window, and the Session window, okay, where you're using clips. And my next tip has to do with using the clips to create a new scene, okay? So if you have a few different parts that are playing that you choose, and you want to make a scene from just that, you can just hit Command Shift I. And as you can see, all those playing clips are now on their own scene. So that's an easy way to make a new scene when you like a combination of clips. Now, as we jump back over to here, as you can see, uh, these are kind of darkened, right? Kind of grayed out. What that means is that it's playing the clips from the session view. So what you need to do is just click here again, and once again, everything will play from the arrangement window. Okay, so that's how you switch between the two. So another thing that we can do is we can select several tracks here, just uh, click, and if I hold Command, I can select separate tracks here, right? And all these selected tracks, now I can affect all of them at once. So for example, with volume, you'll notice that all of these are moving at the same time that I highlighted, all right? You could also, if you want to highlight everything or just a bunch of things in a row, you can simply hit the Shift key 
after clicking your first one and come over and uh, as you can see it highlights everything in a row and once again you can change your volume you can change the panning all at the same time you can mute or unmute you can change the sends so many things that you can do here just by highlighting a bunch at the same time now for in a MIDI or audio clip now if we click on a clip here and we play it you'll notice that the cursor if we make this wide kind of we lose it uh, after it passes like so and we don't see it if we want to change that so that the cursor remains in the middle at all times you want to hit command shift F and then play and the cursor will always remain in the middle you could also switch it up here like so now if you want to side chain a track to the kick drum or anything else the way you do that is drag in a compressor then you're going to click on this little icon here the little arrow that's going to open up the side chain you'll need to turn this on here and then you're going to choose what channel you want to side chain it from so just for ease we'll just uh, assign it to the kick drum right here and now you'll notice that as i play this gain reduces over time now you want to set the threshold for the amount of reduction you want if you turn this off you'll notice a big difference You could obviously change the release time. But I usually start around 50. Now if we want to go really extreme, we'll just pull it all the way down here just so I can show you. And then affect the release time. If I turn it off, Now, if you want to, you could sidechain without using a compressor. And the way you would do that is click on the clip here, and then you would want to click on where it says linked, turn that over to unlinked, all right? And then you're gonna come over to your envelopes, and you're going to choose volume. And now what you can do, there we go. And now what you can do is just uh, drag a loop section. So let's say we just wanna do a quarter note we could just do that and then I'm just single clicking here to add little elbows that I call them something like that and sometimes I like to add another elbow and bring this up a little bit so a little bit peeks through right in the beginning and that kind of acts a bit more like a compressor now we can also hit alt and put a little bit of a curve to that if we want which might sound a little bit more natural. That's totally up to you. And then if we uh, play this, I should probably turn this down to there. And there you go. And that just gets things out of the way for when the kick wants to go. Next, if you want to freeze a track, a simple way to do that is just simply, and the reason that you'd want to freeze a track might be to save CPU, or maybe you want to convert it to audio, which I'll show you right after. So, so what you would do is just right click and click on freeze track. Now it's frozen, so you can't change any of the parameters down here in the effects but what you can still change you could cut copy paste duplicate and you can also change the the volume parameters and the panning so that's a really great way to save on cpu now if you want to turn this to audio once it's frozen you could do a couple things you could right click and just go to flatten 
And as you can see, that will turn it to audio. Or what you can do is if you have a frozen track and you want to save this one, but still convert to audio, just make a new audio clip. That's with Command T to create a new audio clip. If you're making a MIDI clip, that's going to be Command Shift T, by the way. But we're using the audio clip here, so all you have to do once you've frozen part of your track is you could just drag that clip down to the audio track, and as you can see, it makes a audio version. Now what you might need to do is hit the Alt key if you want to have both saved. So next we have resolution, and down here, as you can see right now, this is at a quarter note, okay? So a quarter note is this amount of space. And when I change this to, let's say, two bars, then as you can see, this square becomes the size of two bars. Now, you've also got these adaptive grids, so I can go with uh, medium, for example. And as I scroll in, you'll see that this gets, the resolution gets smaller and smaller. And as I scroll out, it gets bigger and bigger, okay? Another thing that you can do is you can use the command keys. Uh, there's command one, two, three, and four, and all of those affect the resolution in different ways. So command two will double the resolution, as you can see, and command one will half that resolution, all the way down to half a bar. Command three, if you're below one bar, command three will do the triplet. Uh, so this resolution would be on a triplet, which is, that makes it a lot easier to place your notes and, and that sort of thing on that sort of, sort of a resolution scale. Command four turns off the resolution completely. And as you can see here, now you can drag without it snapping from one place to another. And sometimes that can be advantageous. We hit command four again, and that'll turn back on the resolution. And then we have to hit command three again to turn off the triplet. And as you'll notice here, now it snaps to the resolution of whatever I set. So down here, you'll see this headphone icon. And if you have this turned on, then you could go into the presets that come with Ableton and you can preview the sounds. Very convenient. You can also do that with impulse kits that came with Ableton. Some of these did and some of these didn't, but for example, This, of course, also works with samples. So if I turn this on, I can test different samples. And so forth. If you want to loop a section like this, let's uh, try to loop this whole eight bars here. You just highlight that section and then hit Command L. And that will create a loop around it. Now in Ableton 10, hitting Command L will both turn it on and off. Whereas in Ableton 9, you'll have to turn it off here, okay? Now if you want to tune your drums, let's uh, use the claps here, for example. You can actually just raise this up here, give it kind of a, a thin cue by turning this up. And then you can find different notes. Now if we open this up, now, if you look down here, you'll see the key that that frequency is actually playing here, all right? So as we move this, if we know a certain key, we can kind of go directly to it, or we can just kind of listen. Let me... And once you find that frequency that you like, then you can kind of reduce this a little bit, but it just will suggest that note a little bit better and kind of tune the drum to that note. Another way you can tune drums is with the frequency shifter. And here, as we're playing, I could just use the fine tune here. like so, or we could also use frequency.
Now what you'll notice here, this arrow, will, but just by clicking the arrow, it'll bring things back to zero. So anytime you see an arrow like this, you, you can also see it on over here with the panning. So if you want to bring the panning back to center, you just click the arrow. So anytime you see that, that's a great way to get things right to the middle. Now as we look over here, you'll see the S and the R. These are your send and returns here. So as you can see, the sends here, returns show up over here. Now what you'll see is when you add a new return, you'll get a new send button as well. So let's go ahead and create one here just by create, insert return track. And now we have a new return track. And then we would just simply drag an effect in here. For example, maybe a saturator or something like that. Give it a little boost. Make sure it's the wet dry is up to 100% because you want the return to just be full effect because it's still going to be playing the original sound as well. And then as you notice here, now we have a D button or the, a fourth button. And now we can turn up the saturation on any track that we want just by turning up this D knob. If you have a MIDI track here and you want to create a clip, you can just simply highlight what you want to create and then use Command, Shift, and M for MIDI and that creates a new clip. A step record, let's say on this empty track here, what we could do is we can just arm this track like so, and you wanna make sure this headphone icon is on. You wanna put the cursor wherever you want the notes to be, then simply play the notes, and let me see if it's showing the notes that I'm playing or not. There we go, you got these notes here. And then we just hit the right arrow key, and now we've got the note entered. And then you can hit the arrow key to drop another set of notes anywhere that you like as well. I'm just kind of doing this randomly, by the way. If we highlight these notes, then we could use the arrow key to move it or the shift key to make it longer or shorter. Now, if you're just wanting to have, let's say, one main note that's playing, let's say every eighth note, we can just double click to create that, highlight it, set the resolution here for one eighth note, and we can just highlight and Command D to duplicate. If you put your cursor over here to the zoom area, when you go to the left, you'll see the notes get smaller. When you go to the right, the notes get larger. If you want to create a scale to play, you could actually enter in, and I'm just randomly entering in notes right now, but you can enter the notes of a certain scale, highlight them all, and hit the back arrow key. And what it's gonna do is gonna put these notes behind your part. Then what you can do is come up here to fold and now you're only going to be able to put notes on this particular scale that you've created. So a couple warping tips for you guys. So first one is if you hover over one of these gray warp areas here right and hold down shift then you could kind of slide the warp marker around. If you've got a warp marker already marked and you hold down shift then you could actually move the wave back and forth. So if you wanted to get in really close, hold down shift and you can set that right there. If you have warp markers on either side of another warp marker, then that'll protect everything on the outside of that and you're just warping the inside here. If you click on one, hold shift and click on another, you highlight all three of these and then you can move all of these at the same time. Another warping tip here, I'll solo this part here, is if we come over to Beats, and then we can take this to Transient is fine. And if we set this here over to this very first option here, then this here will reduce the envelope, or it's kind of like reducing the decay of each sound. So let me show you how that works.
So you can make it really, really small. Or all the way up, or anywhere in between. So that can really clean up drum groove, especially if you're layering sounds. And sometimes you just want those transients in there, but you don't need the long sounds. Now, if you want to warp multiple tracks, let me just uh, drag this down here. I'll just pop this like this. Now, these are, are the same length, but if they were not the same length, you would want to click on one, hold down shift and click on another. And you could do this with more than two clips. And then what you would want to do is consolidate by hitting command J. And that would make them both the exact same length. And that's, that's important for this to work. And then once you do that, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you're highlighting a drum part last to make it easier to warp. So if I click on this here and then click on this guy here, then as I warp this track here, setting warp markers or what have you, it will also, as you can see, drop the warp markers here as well. So any corrections you make to one, it'll make to all of the, your files at the same time. To our DJ, and let's consider this uh, channel one and channel two, uh, or turntable one, turntable two, right? And you want to cue your tracks. What you want to want to do is come over here to the cue out, and you want to set it to a separate out than the master track. Now, since this sound card is just stereo, what I'll do is I'll just put the master out to one and the cue out to two. And then what I'm going to do here is right here where this says solo, I click on that. And now it's Q. So this is now the Q level. All right. This is the, the volume that you could set in your ear. And as we come over here, you now see that the solo buttons are now have a headphone icon here. Right. So as you click on that, the headphone out will go to the Q out. So as long as your headphone is set to the Q out, then you'll be able to listen to other tracks while one another track is playing. So if you want cue points for your track so you can easily jump from different parts of your song in the middle of a set really easily, the best way to do that is to duplicate your track several times and you just simply click on the clip and hit Command D to duplicate several times. And then you just simply move the start point to different locations in your song. and so forth. And now you have complete control over where the song uh, plays and when it plays. And now you can cue your track from any location. Let me lower this real quick. Like so. So you could cue to breaks and or just kind of get into the song further if you want, whatever it is you want to do. Once you've set these, you can create a folder location and you could highlight all of these clips and just drag over into here. So now if anytime I want to play this song, I could just drag this into the track that I want to play and all my cue points and everything are already set up. If we have several audio or MIDI clips that are kind of spread out here, we want to contain them all as one file, we can simply highlight them and consolidate with Command J. And now it becomes one clip, so it's much easier to just move uh, the clips as one. The same way that you could cut, copy, paste, duplicate a clip or multiple clips within your track, you could also duplicate, copy, cut, paste time as well. What that means is you can literally take, let's say we wanted to remove this section right here in our song completely. We could simply highlight just a section on any track and then hit the command shift X. And as you can see that just take that, that out of the song completely. You could also do the same thing to extend a certain part. So just to make this more noticeable, we'll change the color here. And I could highlight this here and I can command shift D for duplicate. So basically just adding the shift key will do whatever edit you want to the whole track. 
Now, if you want to copy a whole section of a, a track, that's a little trickier, but here's the, the way that you would approach that. So let's say we want to copy this section right here, okay? So what we would do is we'd hit Command Shift X, and that would remove the part. Then what we want to do is Command Z to undo that. And now we could come over to another part of the song. What we want to do is come all the way up to the top to paste. So you want to be on the very first track, set your marker, and then Command Shift V will drop that whole section of your track in a new spot. Now you can also group synths. Uh, you could either group different presets of the same synth or completely different synths. And the way that you would do that is just to click on the instrument that you have and Command G on that. And then you come over to here with the, these little lines here, and you could drop other instruments in here. So I could literally drop an operator synth in here if I want, the electric, and then I could actually layer all these sounds and mix them all separately because each one of these is a different effect chain. So as long as we put effects inside here instead of on the outside, it will only affect the individual. So you could EQ all these differently, you know, dial in your sounds and play this as a stacked synth. Another thing that you can do is you can put some of your favorite synth presets all into one group and then create a chain. So the way that we would do this is we would highlight these little guys here, or actually let's just highlight all these just on the name, and then we drag this all the way out, and then we can right click and distribute ranges equally, all right? So now what we've got is we've got this chain that will change the sounds when we move it across. So what we want to do is we want to assign this to a macro. So let's click here and we'll right click, just assign it to macro one. Now it's a chain selector. So now we can assign this knob to change the sound. So now if I play this, let me just uh, drag in, it doesn't really matter. I'll just have those notes there and solo this. So as you can see, all the sounds are different from each other. So you can do this with uh, your favorite bass presets, you can do this with your favorite leads or whatever, and that way you can kind of quickly get to the sound that you want, and then you can go to that individual sound and still do any tweaking that you want to do to that individual sound. You can also do group effects here. So what I might do is just uh, group this. So once again, Command G to group it. And then I'm going to once again click this icon here to show the chains. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to drag in uh, EQ3 and then duplicate this twice with Command D. And then I'm going to get rid of the EQ8 on this particular example. And then what I can do is I can make the first chain represent just the low frequencies. This chain just represents the mid frequencies, and this one represents the high frequencies. And now I can drag effects to each individual frequency, and that way I can affect each frequency a, a bit differently, which can be really uh, a lot of fun. Or sometimes you don't want you know, really any effects, let's say on the lows, but you want maybe some stuff going on on the mids, and then maybe the highs you want to have you know a little distortion or saturation or whatever. So you can affect each thing differently in your effect rack. And it's just as simple as clicking on which one you want to affect. So let's say this here, the highs, and maybe we want a ping pong delay on the highs. And maybe we want a reverb on the mids. So as you can see, you got different effects on the highs and mids and no effect on the lows. So you could really experiment with this and get some really interesting results.
As you can see with this part here, all the parts are pretty much right on the grid, which is pretty standard. So a great way to kind of keep it solid and on the grid, but give it a little bit of variation is just to simply drag the file into your groove pool. You can keep quantize all the way down to zero and just add a little bit of random to it. Up to five or 6% is usually good enough to just humanize that groove just a little bit. And then what you would do is just drag this over and drop it on there. And now this will play with a little bit of variation. And I'm gonna turn this up extreme so you can hear what it actually does to the, the groove. So as you hear, can hear, this sounds like a drunken drummer at 100%. But more subtly, just gives it a little bit more of a looser sound. And of course, if you want, you can actually drag in a, a bit of a song that you like kind of the groove on and drag it in to the groove pool. And then you can use that groove and assign that, that exact groove to whatever clip that you would like. So if you want to apply the groove to multiple clips, you can just simply highlight these the multiple clips that you want. And then over here, you can actually just choose which groove that you would like. If you want to find Ableton's built-in grooves, you can just simply go to the packs and then the core library and swing and groove right here. And you've got all kinds of different grooves. And if you have this clicked on the headphones, you could go in and kind of hear how these sound. So you could kind of get a feel for what, what you want, drag that in, and then you could assign the percentage of the timing that you want to apply to your current song. So another useful group for grouping your synths is simply to, on one of your synths, you could just drag in an EQ8 and pretty much remove everything below 120. And then what you could do is add an operator instrument as a second layer. And we can remove all these and just set this here to a simple sine wave. And we can set the course uh, lower so you get more sub from it. And then when you're playing your parts, you can have a lower sub playing along with it. So if we arm this track here and play a note, and then we could kind of mix this appropriately for what we're trying to do. And it just gives a, a lower frequency, kind of warms up your sound. Now another advantage of grouping a synth is, uh, we'll just come in and group this real quick, is that we have these macros that I showed you earlier but what a macro can do is it can actually control multiple things at the same time. So for example, I'm just gonna pick some things randomly, but I can have it affect the frequency and the spread and let's say the rate. And now all these at the same time by with one knob, I can affect all of these. Now that's kind of interesting but what's really cool is if we click here on map, we can actually put the amount that everything's affected. So maybe we want a widespread, but we don't want a whole lot of LFO. And we want the frequency to go between 120 and 2K. So now turn off the map here. Now it affects all of these differently. So this is also great like with effects and stuff like that as well. But there's really no limit to what you can do with that. All you have to do is just simply assign all these different parameters to one knob and then you can come into the mapping and then you can get into more details of how you want these things to work. 
if we want to record something from the session window into the arrangement window here, we would just make sure to set our starting point because of course we've already got this stuff in here and tab back over. And then we just hit record here and play our scene. Now, if you want to see the process over here while it is recording, you just hit Command Alt O and it will show the overview right here as you're recording. If you want to sustain a MIDI note past a loop point, for example, if I play this, you're going to hear this note and this note play separately. Like so. But say we want this note to continue all the way through. What we can do is duplicate the loop. That way we, we start on a note here, right? And obviously we can stretch that. But what we would do is set our loop marker over to the second half. And then what we can do is we just put both sides over the edge. So now it'll sound like this. So dummy clips are pretty interesting here and the way that you approach this is you're sending the material from one track and sending it to another track. So as you can see here, we've got our audio being sent to what we're calling a dummy track, which is just an audio track, right? And then what we can do is we can either drag in pretty much any file we want. If I go over to um, just some loops, I could actually drag that in. And then what I can do is just go to my volume here and just turn it, just turn this whole thing down. Now there's no volume, then what you can do is you can go in and you can assign the effects. So what I've done here is I've dropped four different effects on here. And by, by default, they're all off. So when I come over to here, what I can now do is I can go to any of the effects and I can turn that effect on and automate that. And that's what I did over here. So basically I just uh, created a blank clip like this with no volume and duplicated it several times. So I could add different effects to each one of the dummy clips. So I, if I come up here, I start with the top one, which is dry, which is basically all the effects are off. That way you can return to the normal sound of the original file. And then these, as we come in here, like to erosion, you can see I've made some automation on different aspects of the effect. Same here with the grain delay and so forth. So this way we can use these clips to affect this automatically. Also, what you're doing here, you're sending the audio to the dummy clip. You're turning your monitor here off. You wanna make sure that you don't have any uh, audio input here uh, because you're setting your monitor to in and you don't want like a microphone causing any feedback or anything. So make sure to do that. And then once you have that set up, you're pretty much ready to go. So we'll start with dry. And then we'll add our erosion clip. Grain delay. Flange. show you some of this. And then back to dry. So that is uh, what dummy clips can do. And you can assign like as many effects as you want to one clip and you can make that clip length as long as you want to create really interesting automations. I just did these really quickly to give you a, an example of what you can do with this. So if you want to make a kick drum in operator, that's pretty simple. So the first thing you're going to want to do is drag in an operator. You could turn off most of the oscillators and just leave one oscillator here. 
and this one you would make a sine wave. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to click on fixed here and we're going to get a fixed frequency. That way, no matter what key you play on the keyboard, you're going to get the same sound. So that's what we got so far. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring the decay down. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring the frequency to where we think that it'll fit. I figure we'll just go with about 80 hertz. Next thing that we're going to want to do is come to our pitch envelope here and we're going to turn the initial up. So we want to create kind of like a pitch bend, if you will, and we're going to make it less noticeable with by using the decay. And we're going to turn this pitch envelope to 100% here. And that's how we get that snap in the beginning of the sound, okay? So once we have that snap, then we could choose how much of that snap we want with the pitch envelope percentage. And here we can listen to with and without the pitch envelope. And that's as easy as it is to make a decent kick drum in Operator. So a quick EQ tip here is I would remove any frequency below 120 hertz on any track that is not a kick drum or a bass. Now there are certain exceptions and you know obviously you'd want to check each of your sounds but this is a really great way to clean up your bottom end on your track. And also if you have sounds that even after removing the 120 hertz still sound a little bit muddy, you could either continue to bring this up or you can use a second EQ and try removing somewhere between 250 to 400 hertz, somewhere in there. And then you would tighten up the Q a little bit. And that will usually get rid of some of the mud in the sound. If you see this empty audio track here, what you'll notice is there's an effect chain that I've created here. So anytime I create a new audio track, you'll see the same setup for each one. So if you wanna have a default setup for any track that you create, simply come over here, right click, and you could set to save as default audio track. All right, and what I recommend is that you turn off all of your effects so they're not automatically on. That way you can have all the effects that you might use sort of thing, and just turn on the ones that you actually use. For example, I just told you about the 120 hertz cut on most of the tracks. Well, I've already got this EQ set up to do that, so all I have to do is turn that on, and it's ready to go. By double clicking up here at the top, what that does is it will zoom in to the full screen of the parts that you have here. Now, what you can also do is you can highlight a section and then double click, and it will highlight just that section. And if you come back up here, if you deselect the selected clip and then double click here, it'll zoom back out. You can also do this inside your clip. So you can choose just one note or something like that, double click, and it'll stretch that note out. Unselect it, double click, and you zoom back out. Also, while we're on the subject of zooming, obviously by clicking up here and dragging down, you can zoom in and by moving your mouse back up, you can zoom out. And that, that's the same for anything in Ableton. Now you probably already know that the space key will start and stop your track. But if you hold down the shift key and then hit the space key, it'll continue from where it left off. And if you just hit the space key again, then it will start from the beginning again. On any MIDI track, you can highlight a section where you would like to put a MIDI track and just hit Command Shift M. If you hold down the Alt key and click on the arrow of one of the tracks, you can either reduce their size or if you click on it again while holding Alt, you will expand all your tracks. 
Also, if you don't have this MIDI button on, you can hit the S key and that will reduce all your tracks as well. When it comes to automation, you can come over here to anything that you want to automate. So let's just use volume as an example and a single click will make an elbow. All right. So just single click and then of course you can move any of these elbows as you would like. If you hold down the Alt key in between two elbows, you could create more of a bend. If you drag this elbow to the next, you can remove elbows as you like and as you go back, it will replace them. If you highlight a certain section and then hold the Shift key, you can move just that section that you highlighted up or down. If you want to duplicate your automation, you can just simply highlight and Command D. And if you want to clear your automation, you can just simply come over to the part that you're automating, in this case, the volume, right click and delete automation. Or you can just highlight and hit the delete key. If you're using Ableton to DJ and you've got a warped track here, you can actually set loops on the fly. So how you would approach that is you would come over here to key and then you would assign a key to the loop, the set point, and the length. Then we'll go ahead and turn this off. And now what we can do, now this by default is going to set by the bar. So you don't have to be perfect, but it, it will set it to the closest bar when you hit the button. So what we can do is, I'm just gonna solo this track here and turn this down. Let's make sure there's no effects on this. Go ahead and play this. And if I want to set the loop, I turn on the loop. And then I just hit when I want to start. There we go. And then the set length when I want to end. And now we're looping this part. And then we just uh, can turn off the loop when we want to continue. You can now edit multiple MIDI clips at once. You just simply highlight one MIDI clip and then you can hold command to highlight other MIDI clips that you want. And now what you'll notice here is recognize the color of each of the clips here and you'll see we have the same colors here. So I could just click on blue and then I can edit this part and then I can go to green and edit that part or go to the red clip and edit that. So this makes it really easy to maybe come up with a good melody that go with certain chords or bass line or what have you because you can have all the notes in the same window. So now we'll get into some command alt keystrokes. So command alt B is going to hide and bring back the browser. Command alt O will hide and bring back the overview. Command Alt I will remove and bring back the input section. Command Alt S will show and hide the sends. Easier to see over here. Command Alt R will show and remove the return tracks. Command Alt M will show or remove the mixer. Command F will show the search window here, so you can search for whatever just by hitting Command F. Command R on a track or a clip allows you to rename your part. We'll just call this Kick 2. And by hitting Tab, you can just jump over to the next track to rename. That makes renaming your tracks pretty simple. If you're on any effect and you want kind of a, if you want to fine tune any of your settings, you just hold down shift and then you can drag on whichever and it will give you much more fine tune and control over the parameters. And you can do this on any knob that you would like. If you click on your loop and then you do command up, that will expand your loop section. 
and the down arrow will obviously lessen the loop section. If you're in a MIDI clip, you can highlight all your notes here and with command shift U, you could bring up your quantize settings. Once you have your settings set up, you could just hit command U and it'll quantize to that setting. If you click on any note and hold down command and then move your cursor up or down, as you can see, you can control the level of the velocity. And you can also do this with multiple notes if you prefer. Although you may be tempted to use the volume edits here and automate your volume like so, a better approach is to drag in a utility effect and do all your vol volume automations with the utility. That way you can always come back to your mixer and just fine tune without having to interrupt any of the automations you've done. That'll also give you the ability to highlight several tracks at the same time if you want to lower a whole section really easily without affecting any of the automation. If you like to sidechain several of your tracks to your kick drum, best approach is to create a sidechain track. Get your sidechain here. Set this to your kick drum. Obviously, you'll fine tune your settings like we did earlier in this video. And then you could just send any track you like to the sidechain track. So if I wanted to send every single track to that, I could pretty easily do that just by highlighting. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to do this with the kicks, but I will we'll turn that track off there. I'll do this to all the other sounds here that I've got going. Send them to sidechain instead of master. Then what we want to do is we want to make sure to set this to no input and then in. And now as you can see, we've got all the tracks coming through the sidechain. And then you can set everything at once with the side chain. So that's about 101 tips for you guys.